Welcome to the channel. Thankful that you're here and grateful that you clicked on the video. If you would, please subscribe to the channel, like the video, and drop a comment below. I've got a vacant piece of property, about three quarters of an acre here, that I've developed into an RV parking spot that would be a privately owned spot, as opposed to an RV park or renting out a spot, something like that. So in this particular market, this concept works. Probably wouldn't work everywhere, but I wanted to put this video out there for anyone looking to own their own RV spot, or anyone just curious about what all goes into something like this. I've got cost breakdown throughout the, the video on the different aspects of this development, and I'll do a rough cost total at the end. I tried to include as much as possible. I'm sure I missed something though. If you have any questions or need any clarification, just drop them in the comments and I'll, I'll try to get with you. I'll share what went good, what went bad, and what I would have done differently throughout the video. Uh, any feedback, any comments, drop them in there and I'll get back to you. Uh, if, if you're looking to do something similar, I hope this video gives you some good ideals of how to do or how not to do your own project. And please talk to some local contractors, real estate agents, check on any permits required and available utilities. This video isn't the expert authority on how to do it just in an entertaining way i did this one in particular <clears throat> i've been selling these lots in this subdivision project that i did i broke it out into a total of uh seven lots and i've sold two to the neighbor uh that's next to this property and, and they did a similar development with um, two rv spots on that i sold another one where I believe that's their plan as well as to put an RV spot on there. So I'm going to go ahead and fully develop this one <clears throat> uh, and have it pretty much where somebody could just, you know, buy the property and back up their RV in, in kind of a plug and play situation. I do have some other lots that I'm just selling the land by themselves and they can develop it from there. Um, some of the things that went into this project is basically clearing out the property, clearing the land. Um, and then I went in and staked out and planned out where the, the driveway and the pads and everything were gonna go. Um, as far as utilities, which was in pretty, pretty important, had electric lines all across the front of the property and that was a pretty easy uh, deal. This one needed a water well as well as a septic system for the RV pads. Um, so I went ahead and put those in. I built up the driveway. I did like a U-shaped driveway. So this is like bank sand to compact down and, and put down before uh, crushed concrete, which we did crushed concrete for the driveway. <coughs> uh, when you pull in and then uh, we had to clear out. So you see where it's been mulched and cleared out. So this is the, the basic overall start of the project so that was um i think we did four loads of sand in the 12 yard dump trucks brought it in spread it out with a, a tractor um and just kind of got it laid out for what was going to be you know the the driveway and parking areas and stuff like that so this was kind of a rough first step uh, to getting the the project rolling um and then that's where the RV pad's going to go eventually is where you sell those yellow stakes. And this is looking back at the road here. So um, had some cleanup to do, some tires, some surprises that were just in the trees as we were clearing them out. So um, this is where the utility pole is going to go from AEP. It's going to put in a utility pole right in front of the property line. So I've got to go in and <clears throat> clear out these trees get a clear shot back to where I want the, the pole for the RV pad to go. Um, that was basically a, a free, they said they do it one time for each property. They'll give you, I think it was 75 feet of, of electric line into the property. And then past that, you have to pay extra for that. So they came out and marked where that red stick was, where the utility pole is going to go. This is the water well crew. Um, putting in the water well actually next door on the other pads that I sold uh, where they just bought the property themselves. So then they moved over to, to this building site and set up their equipment and started drilling the, the water well and, and going from there. 
Ended up with a 167 foot water well down to the bottom, seven inch borehole, all PVC lines. So they got a pretty, pretty good rig there. Um, and that's, that's what it looks like. So that'll supply the, the RV site. Um, that'll supply a couple of extra hose spigots out on the property. Um, and this is day one right here where they, they got to drill in and then they just left it there overnight, came back, I think the next day and finished it off, you know, so, um, didn't get a lot of action while they were out there as far as film, but, um, you can see in the background there, it's set up. And then this is the, uh, the start of getting the pergola built, a little shade structure there to, you know, escape from the RV, go out in the shade, enjoy the breeze, have a drink. Um, you know, so this is them starting on that used, um, eight by eight posts, I believe for the, the four corners and I, I think this was about a 20 foot by 15 foot pergola. Um, <clears throat> and then they dug the post down three or four feet concrete, braced them up, left them overnight, let them dry, dry in before they started, you know, putting on the top pergola runners and everything. So that's what it looked like, you know, after about a day, they got it squared up and braced and ready ready for the next day there's you see the water well tank in the background um got some blue lines where we're gonna run water lines eventually so <clears throat> i use those eight by eight posts those were pretty solid and and they may have been no they were eight by eight so um you know it gives it a beefier look could have gone 12 by 12 but those those eight by eights were wildly heavy and heavy duty and I think they're going to do really good for for what it is so made a lot of trips to the lumber yard this is um just a you know you could drive in get your lumber and hit the road so these were the the top pieces that were going to go on that pergola and uh picking that up another trip to the lumber yard I think the best thing about the lumber yard is that they'll actually deliver it so if you could get all this delivered that would be great. A lot of these runs to the lumber yard were just a couple extra pieces that the guys needed. And so we'd go and pick those up. Um, plenty of, plenty of supplies there though. So just a little tour of what the lumber yard looked like back on the job site. They're bracing it up. They built some scaffold on there so where they could go back and forth. And basically two guys ran this whole Thing. I think it took them uh, maybe three days total, two and a half days to to get that thing done. The first day, all they did was set the post, square it up, get them concreted in with some bags of concrete. And then from there, they were rocking and rolling. You know, they they beveled out the edges on the top and, you know, made it real nice. All treated lumber, you know, ready for whatever the elements throw at it. <clears throat> so these were, I think these were two by two tins across the top and uh you know all bolted through all the way and um guys really did a really good job i think this total cost on the pergola i think the the labor they charge about fifteen hundred dollars i think for the labor on the pergola um and then the materials for you know the posts two by sixes um just extra lumber for bracing and all that i think it was around two thousand dollars so i think all in on the pergola maybe we were about thirty five hundred dollars um for the whole job on that piece you know without the con you know without like the concrete decking and anything under it but just the the construction and the materials on the pergola was about we'll say thirty five hundred dollars total um <clears throat> and there they are you know getting after it they've got the sides done and they and they rock and rolled on the top from there and uh, some bracing different bracing and stuff like that along the way so there it is already um, coming together i think those were two by sixes on the top that you see running that way so i think you know the first boards that went on were two by tens 
and then two by sixes, and then across the top, um, which really gave it a lot of shade was the one by one by fours. I think 20 foot long one by fours or maybe 12 footers that they cut. So you can already see a little bit of shade on the ground from that one. So somebody with an RV is going to love sitting under that. Walk out, drink your iced tea, look in the woods, wait for some deer to come out or some birds, some hummingbirds, all right there. And here they are nailing uh, the top pieces across the one by fours, all treated still, all galvanized, you know, bolts and uh, hurricane straps holding it all together. So sturdy build really came out nice. Uh, they got it done. Like I said, it took them probably a couple days. And there's, I think that's pretty much the finished product as far as right after they wrapped it up. That uh, that was about it. You know, I think he's going back and putting in some hurricane straps and just buttoning up a few things. But, you know, squared it up, got it done. You can see underneath there's pretty good shade going, going on from what they did there. So uh, we did that one before we poured any of the concrete or anything like that. So it's ready to go. Uh, these guys are bringing in some some more sand uh, they call this bank sand and uh, we use that for inside the concrete forms to build it up pack it down a little bit before we put the rebar before we put any you know any concrete down or anything like that so they brought that's a 12 yard dump truck i think those dump trucks were for that load of sand was about 175 dollars delivered and that's you know that's a 12 yard dump truck so delivered hundred seventy five dollars more or less and i think we ended up with quite a few of those you know but just one for the concrete but you know throughout the whole project we, we got quite a bit of sand brought in so they're forming up along there i've painted out where i want the forms to go and there they go they they formed up the the concrete right there for the rv pad uh, for underneath the pergola you can see him spreading out the dirt. He's back there with a plate packer in the in the background under the shade, already enjoying that shade. He's packing down all that that bank sand that we got brought in, so it, it it's going to hold up better. You know, you you, you got to pack that stuff down. So there there's a close up there of him just you know working over that thing. It's got a water tank on the top there, and kind of put some water out on that sand, and then that it's just got a metal plate. And you basically just walk behind that thing and packs it down you know it's pretty good for a small concrete project like that <clears throat> they spread out a lot of that that sand in the rv spot there too i think that rv spot's about 38 39 40 feet deep got the rebar delivered and i think it's about 15 feet maybe 18 feet wide pretty wide to where you could park your rv on there have room on you know the back side of your rv um, to walk around it and then walk out, you know, front, you know, have some chairs or ice chest or whatever, and then a good sidewalk. I think that's probably a four foot sidewalk going up to the, you know, the pergola area. So, um, so we've got all that framed up, formed up and, uh, pretty much ready to rock and roll and start putting out that rebar. And, uh, you can see he's got the sand packed down pretty good underneath that, that pergola. And then that, that plate packer ended up messing up on us. And that was just a rental from Home Depot. So I went back and got a, a bigger plate packer. Basically it looks the same, but it's it's a little bit wider. And so I, I got the other one while they were uh, continuing to spread out that dirt and everything. And so I'll, I'll, we'll come back with that with the other plate packer and uh, continue doing the same thing. Uh, uh, looks like there he is right there. So we got a new plate packer from Home Depot. I don't know what that thing, I think it was about, it was around a hundred dollars a day to rent that plate packer. So got that, got that in there, getting ready for the concrete pour, just getting everything prepped. You know, a lot of the concrete work is, has nothing to do with the concrete. It's all the, the preparation that goes under it. So they're kind of leveling it out, making sure it's good. We've got all the rebar in there, got the chairs, which are the little black things kind of holding it up. So the Concrete can get in there. All that rebar is on one foot center. So those are one foot by one foot squares, which is probably a little overkill, but, you know, better safe than sorry. And, you know, RVs could be big. They could be 
heavy so figured might as well go ahead and put more rebar in there just to make sure we we got it all done right so it's all tied together got chairs under it formed up all the sand underneath is packed really good um, <clears throat> so at this point we're pretty much ready got the concrete ordered from the ready mix folks and it was uh they were pretty much ready to rock and roll as far as you know just tell us when you need it and we'll get it there so i called them and they were like next day they were ready to go and i think i had actually called them two days prior but they were you know whenever we wanted it they would bring it so i told them to you know we we're two days out when i called them and at this point here we're we're ready to to get that concrete coming there it all is ready to go i think this is the day that they were bringing the concrete um making some last minute adjustments cutting some rebar tying up the last little bits where the you know where the con where the rebar overlaps um three-man crew i had to jump in there actually at the end and help them out a little bit or maybe I just wanted to, but anyway, I got in on that action too. They're just kind of hanging out now, waiting for the truck to show up. It's on the way. Um, it's looking like a good day. It's pretty hot though. So something to keep in mind too is, you know, that concrete, the hotter it is, the quicker it sets, you know? So, um, when that truck starts pouring and that, that wet ready mix concrete hits that hot rebar that's been in the sand, that's been in the sun, that sand has been in the sun, you know, it's pretty hot. So that stuff will start setting up pretty quick. So we, we, we got it all done on this one, but it was, uh, it was a hot day and we had the water hose going and trying to keep everything as cool as possible. But you know, when it's 90 something degrees outside, it's hard to keep it too cool for too long. So we got it done. They just backed that thing up in there and extended out you know there's pieces that go on there so we got it all backed up in position we did it under the pergola first maybe thinking back on it we would have gone with the uh, rv spot first we had two truckloads come so and they were going to wait for us to call for the second one and uh <clears throat> so the first one showed up we told them to, let's dump it under the pergola first so we had to work it around those posts but we got it all done uh, this was a full truck here and then the second truck that came was uh i think it was three yards on top of that so so one full truck plus a partial truck three yards is what we got done and then like i said we got three guys working this concrete job here and they got it all done in i don't know a few hours i think from start to finish i don't remember it got kind of hectic after you know, after that concrete started flowing, just trying to get it spread out and taken care of, but it looked really good when it was done. So that, uh, that concrete's about to start flowing. Everybody's getting ready for it. Everybody's pretty relaxed right now, but when they start realizing that that stuff starts setting up pretty quick, as far as getting hard, it, uh, it starts moving a little quicker and everybody starts going. So there it is. I think this was 3,000 or 3,500 PSI concrete with fiber added to it with a micro, they call it actually microfiber. I think there's fiber and microfiber. Um, can't really see the fibers in it right here, but you, you could see it after it was poured and dried that there, that there was fiber in there. Uh, looked good, looked fine, looked great. Um, so it's 3,000 or 3,500 PSI concrete with fiber. Uh, then on the one inch, or on the one foot centers as far as the rebar that was uh that was pretty good so that's uh that's going to be good for what we needed it for it's kind of an all purpose you know general purpose mixture right there and uh <clears throat> there it is that's all the concrete we needed no nah, just a little slow going and then it, it starts flowing and, and coming out so he'll spread it that that tailgate on that truck oscillates goes back and forth and uh here it is time to rock and roll so they they start getting after it spreading it around he can move that thing a little bit than those two guys 
Uh, I think they got 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 it going pretty good from there, and uh, th- that was it. You know, it just flowed from there. One truck, and then the other truck came, and we got it done. So this is, uh, like I said, all the prep was maybe a day and a half, and then the uh, actual pouring of the concrete was uh, maybe half a day. So all the prep work took most of the time, and then. This this came out too, as far as the cost breakdown. I try to give you all that best I have it. Uh, the concrete for just the the ready mix concrete was about nineteen hundred dollars for that you know full truck plus another three yards came out to around nineteen hundred dollars. We could call it two thousand. Uh, the labor for the the crew to to frame it up and do all the rebar and and all that, get it ready and pour it, everything you've seen right now, that was $2,200 for the three guys there that did that. Um, And then then there's the the boards for the framing and the the rebar itself, Uh, the wire ties, chairs for the rebar. I think all that came out to, call another $1,400. I think the job total is for concrete with, you know, the ready mix for the labor, forming it up, getting it ready. Turnkey was about $5,500, more or less. And I think that that was about 800, maybe 850 square foot total. So I think that, you know, that was, that was a pretty fair price. I think it came out to six, $7 a square foot when it was all said and done for, for everything. So it came out really good. They just worked this truck and we, we got it. We got it done. Uh, under the pergola for sure with that one load or with that first load and kept on moving i think we're able to get the sidewalk going down and the start of the rv pad all with that one load of concrete and at first we were going to get two full loads so thankfully we didn't do that and that was kind of you know keeping sure the measurements, you know, and they took pretty decent measurements and he didn't think we'd need the second one totally, but he kind of told me, you're going to need at least two, two trips. So the first, the first one was a full, full load of concrete. And the second one was just a partial and, uh, probably would have been better to have one extra guy working it because with him on the tailgate and the other two guys, spreading it out um you know could have had one guy three guys in there doing that would have been good but he he jumped back and forth and these guys definitely hustled it out and got it done the uh the uh weather could have been 10 degrees cooler and that would have helped too but anyway um he's he's getting it done i think we actually had one of the guy on the crew supposed to be there but he he canceled or no show, didn't show up, overslept, didn't make it one way or another, whatever the excuse was. So we were able to get it done. I had to put the camera down at, at some point and jump in there. I think on the RV pad part of it, I kind of got in there and started spreading out concrete too. So There it is getting it kind of level but that that wasn't all the concrete in that truck so they're going to work it for a little bit there then they're going to move that <clears throat> they're going to back up and reposition that truck pull up back up get it uh, in a different spot and then get everything under the pergola kind of straightened out you, and then pour some more concrete but just going to get this set up generally there for for now but and the thing working around those posts and stuff kind of slowed him down too. When it was all said and done, he said, maybe we should have started on the RV spot, you know, being as hot as it was, it would have just been a straight shot, no uh, posts in the way. So, oh, well, live and learn, but it, it all came out pretty good and we got it done. You can see that reposition in the, the truck right here. So he'll be able to swing into the, the sidewalk area, then swing down into the RV pad spot there which is direct sunlight on that. So it, it's even hotter there. And that metal rebar, you know, is taking up that, that sun, 
all that sand is spread under there. It's, it's baking up. It's, it's absorbing all that sun too. So that was something to keep in mind. I know, you know, if you're doing one of these projects, you're not going to be doing it all by yourself out there. You know, these guys are professionals. I just hired them to come in and do the, the work. So they, they kind of got it going on. They know what they're doing and do it quite a bit. I'm just trying to give some tips of what I learned, you know, doing this. Cause a lot of these lots I've just been selling, uh, you know, I did another project one street over and I sold a bunch of these lots and, you know, people developed their RV spots and mobile home spots and stuff like that on them. And, and then that was it. And I kind of been doing the same thing with this property as well. These seven lots on this property. And this is the first one that I actually went in and developed, you know, with the concrete and the electrical and water wells and septic system to you know, do a turnkey deal on this as an investment. And I'll, we'll turn around and sell this one, hopefully to somebody that's looking for this sort of setup. And, uh, so I just, you know, trying to give as much as what I learned throughout the process is, oh, I didn't know that. Or, yeah, this was something that I should have known, but I can see where it makes sense to know. Maybe if you're going to get into a project like this or you know something going on, it'll it'll be a little nugget, you know, that, that hey, this is something that I heard from this guy that did it. Oh, okay, great. You know, so that, that sand heats up. I think this was like three o'clock in the afternoon too. A lot of these concrete pours, you'll see them have, you know, bigger concrete pours. They'll do them at three o'clock in the morning when the sun's not out. And, uh, this driver here of this concrete truck said that he'd been working since, um, you know, early morning that morning. And this was his last one of the day. And, uh, he didn't bring the second truck. Another driver did. So, you know, they're, they're going all, all morning long when the sun's not out one to keep it all, you know, cool. It gives you more time to work it. It's more, you know, pliable. You can move it around better. Once that sun starts hitting it though, it, and it starts drying up, it, it definitely becomes a fight to, to move that concrete around where you want it and, uh, and whatnot. So, so a lot of this, so being three o'clock in the afternoon on this pour, I mean, it was in the heat, hot of the day. Those guys got sun beating down on them. The concrete's got sun beating down on them. Before that concrete even leaves the truck, that rebar and the sand and everything else has, you know, the sun beating down on it. So it doesn't give you a lot of time. Um, and, you know, you can see this poured out quite a bit of concrete. It did at least half of that RV pad plus under the pergola plus the sidewalk. And, you know, for two guys to be spreading that out and the one guy's basically working the tailgate, you know, the better he can spread it with the tailgate, the better it is because you don't have to spread it with a shovel. It's just using gravity and swinging that thing back and forth. And then once it's, it's out there, those guys got to work it from there. So this is the truck that it, it brought. I wish I remembered how many, I have the paperwork as far as how many yards of concrete came out of there, but, um. I forget exactly what it was, um, but that's the, the truck that brings it pretty much brand new. They keep those things clean because you can imagine that concrete could make a mess of that truck. So you see, they've got a water tank on that truck and they've got, you know, hoses and everything to, to keep it clean, keep it ready. This was a pretty much brand new truck. He said it was a couple months old. So got it all done. Got the two trucks in. Got all the concrete laid out. Long day. Those guys were ready to rock and roll. I think I think that started around 3 o'clock. And I think they probably left around mm, 6.30 or so. So a couple hours, a few hours to to get all that done. And uh, they did it, you know. They got it done. And it was a good project. And that's basically the finish, you know, right after it got poured. Started drying. I think that was that evening, so... Um, just taped it off so nobody would drive on there, or, you know, whatever. I, I hate to imagine what can happen, you know, so I just felt better putting the tape around it and, uh, rock and roll. This is crushed concrete that I'm going to use for the driveway. Um, just simpler, you know, spread it out. That's one truckload. Um, we use that same plate packer 
um, to go in and, and compact that sand that was down, spread the sand out, compact it down, spray it with water, compact it down to give it a good base. That sand's quite a bit cheaper than the crushed concrete. So we try to make it as smooth and level and compacted with the sand first to where we're basically just putting a top coat of the, the crushed concrete over that, that compacted sand. Um, <clears throat> it was, that's one truckload of crushed concrete. And I think that was um, the same size dump truck that brings the the sand. This was a 12-yard dump truck. And the um, they sell this by the ton. So I think this was... 20 25 dollars a ton and that dump truck held 20 tons so it was about 500 dollars for the material and then there's 150 dollars to deliver it so i think all in all that one load of crushed concrete was about 650 675 somewhere in there and this is it after it's been spread out and run over with the tractor to kind of compact that down some uh, that one load that 20 20 tons 12 yard dump truck was enough material to do everything that we, we needed. So we did that whole U-shaped driveway, um, the parking spot over on the, the side of the driveway over here along the grass. And then <clears throat> that's it. So there's kind of a, you know, and this is all recycled, you know, from concrete demolition jobs, they'll take it to a, a, a yard and, uh, it's normally free for those guys to unload that stuff. So if they do a concrete demolition of a foundation or something, they'll take it over there, then they'll grind it up and then they'll resell it. So finally the utility company showed up with the electric pole that was going to go in front. So they had to work through some trees across the street. I'd already cleared out the trees on, you know, my side of the property, giving it a straight line back to where they were going to run the electric wire on the next phase, but these guys were just here setting the pole. So they've got the utility pole unloaded off their trailer. That boom is, you know, kind of like a crane and a bucket and, you know, it's pretty versatile, but they use it as a crane to, to set that post. But he's trying to get it worked around the trees across the street so he can do a full rotation there. And I think they end up having to move the truck and, and reposition things, but so he'll pick it up with that. He'll pick up that uh, utility pole with that crane truck and, and get it set. And they're they're digging a hole at the same time, getting it ready, and they'll uh, they'll have that pole set, and then another crew from the utility company will come and and run the the electric wires and everything. Like I said, this part here was free. You know, I called the utility company, which in this area is AEP. And so I called AP and gave them the, the service address and they came out and marked where they wanted to put the pole. And I was able to put some input on that as well. Like, Hey, I want to put the RV spot on this side of the property. And this are the plans that I have. Um, if you could put the pole right here, which they, they put it right where I asked. They said, that's not a problem. You know, I guess if there was a problem with that spot, they'd tell you to suggest something different, you know, so an engineer draws up whatever plans for them to set the pole, they get it out there. I think it only took them maybe two weeks, you know, from the time I first called them to actually getting the, the, this crew out here to set this pole. So pretty quick from these guys. And that's a long handle post hole digger that they used on this one. I've seen them with augers before, you know, drill that hole, but I think there was utility lines above this spot too. So they were just better to go in with a, with the handheld post hole diggers and and get the hole dug that they needed to get ready for the the pole to go in so yeah so he couldn't beat those trees up so he's i think he goes up the road turns around comes back and repositions to to get everything going here you can see that thing's treated that black color on there or whatever so stuff will never go bad no termites are going to eat that. So this is the second crew that came, oh, you know, after they got all that set. And he's running the wire from from the road, from that pole. You see there the black pole set up. So he'll run the wire from there back to my utility pole, which the electrician set, which I did have to buy that one 
right there with the meter box and the panel and everything on it. So they they set the uh, they tied in the wire there at the weather head up top. Uh, then they'll right there he's putting in the wire on the weather head. Uh, then he'll he'll stretch that wire out up to the utility poles, and he'll get it all connected. Put the meter on there. And we're basically rock and rolling. I had to get a permit from the county. So, you know, to develop, it's called a development permit. Once they get that, then it basically releases your electricity and they'll come out and hook it up. It's kind of how it works around here. So I'd check with whoever's involved as far as permitting and the electric companies. If, if you ever plan to do something like this, you know, make sure to cover all your bases in that aspect of it. This right here, that orange paint line is measuring 50 50 feet from the water well a 50 foot radius and it had to be a 50 foot radius from the water well uh clearance between the water well and the septic tank so he came out and marked where they're going to install the septic system the drain field the tank and everything and then he also measured out 50 foot of clearance from the the water well to make sure there's no you know obviously uh you don't want water and sewage mixing so 50 foot is the distance and this is the septic tank here concrete tank um, heavy heavy duty you see some of these poly like the green tanks or the black tanks which are like a plastic or poly tank and uh in this county here they don't allow that you know it's right on the coast so i think and i'm not sure you may check in your area but I think it has to do with a water table and, you know, the, after a good rain or something like that, the, uh, the ground water will push those tanks out of the ground or they'll push up on it. So if you bury a plastic tank, I've heard stories of people actually putting the plastic tanks in, cover them with dirt, other than the water, the ground water will rise and it'll crush that plastic tank underground. So these are uh, solid concrete poured tanks with a concrete lid. And, you know, and I think that's the explanation for why they don't use any of the green or black plastic tanks. Um, they just strap that thing on that truck. This is a 1,250-gallon tank. And this is oversized for, you know, this property actually has two RV spots on it. One of them is just parked on that crushed concrete, but it has the hookups. Uh, for the sewer and the electric so this septic tank is actually designed to hold uh, enough you know drain water and stuff sewer water drain from kitchen sinks toilets showers um, the way the system was designed this would be capable of supporting like a three-bedroom home um, and up to about six RVs, the way that the septic installer designed it. So, you know, you'll, if, how this kind of worked for me, and you, you need to check with anybody, you know, any local experts in your area, if you're going to do anything like this, but, you know, they, they designed a septic, uh, an on-site sewage facility, which is, you know, the septic tank and the drain field and the drain lines and everything. And then they, you know, they go off the capacity and the size of the house or, size of the development that you're going to do and then they get a, a septic design together submit that to the county county environmental health department approves that and then you're you've got your permit to go ahead and, and install an on-site sewage facility um, this is called easy flow drain line for the septic tank drain field um, do some more research on septic tanks and how they work if you're completely oblivious to them but basically the water you know leaves the in this case the rv drains out you know everything from the drain lines from the toilets from the sinks whatever showers drains out into the the big tank there's different couple compartments and then the water kind of flows out into these tubes here the easy flow into the drain field um and then go from those those are basically like what they look like packing peanuts basically um is what i've seen um and this is just a, like a convent, what they would call a conventional system here, uh, with a, a pump assist, a, a pump assisted conventional uh, system here. And that's it. You know, we'll use that mini excavator, uh, that the septic guys dropped off. 
they'll use that. They'll dig it all out, get it set, put the tank in, put the drain field lines in, which are the easy flow lines, um, wire up the pump, set the pump, set the tank, get it all going. It's 50 foot from that um, water well. So this is one of the definite things that you know needed to be permitted. Here it is in the ground. So you've got the risers. They've actually added on what you call a riser to those green caps. And that's probably the most, um, you know, there's safety features on those green caps. So nobody falls in. You want to check all those out. Make sure that everybody's doing what they need to do on those. We ran conduit before we poured the concrete for the electrical to run to the pump. Uh, the sewer line runs behind the concrete slab and then into the tank there. The green is the sewer line that goes all the way back up towards the, you can see it popping up there. So it runs behind the slab into the tank in that first compartment there and uh, works its way through that, that tank through that system, that gray conduit there is for the pump assisted portion of the septic tank. Um, other than that white pipe going into those green pipes over there is what they call the drain field and where that easy flow stuff is, is under that, that black wrap. So and then it runs all the way back, back of the property there. That's the drain field. And, um, that's basically the septic system right there. And you can see they're pretty long runs of of drain line there. And the septic tank guy was kind of telling me that, you know, <clears throat> yes, the size of the tank matters quite a bit, you know, as far as capacity of what your system can hold and, you know, talk to your local septic guys or gals that are installing these systems. If you are needing a septic system on your property and, uh, you know, the drain field, the size of the drain field plays a huge role in the capacity as well. What they're doing here is filling this tank with water to make it heavier in case there is any rains, big rains or anything that comes along. They don't want that um, big septic tank to pop out of the ground, which can happen. Same thing with swimming pools. You know, that if, you know, people drain their swimming pool and then they get a good rain coming in or something and that pressure from that groundwater will push a, sw a concrete swimming pool or fiberglass swimming pool right out of the ground do the same thing with a septic tank so they're filling it up with water there <clears throat> this is me just loading up on some grass to put around all that concrete grass is another thing uh if you do need to get you know carpet grass this is like a floritam saint augustine grass definitely get that delivered if you can wildly heavy um, just, yeah, recommend delivery on that and lumber. And so guy with the tractor was out there and I told him, you know, I need to run some water lines over that well. So he got in there with a front end loader and, and dug these trenches and looking back, I don't think the, the front end loader is probably the best way. It definitely got the job done and he went pretty deep with those trenches and then, you know, dug a lot of it out with his tractor. And then what he couldn't do, do with the tractor, he uh, hand dug and uh, got it done. But, you know, a trencher rental from Home Depot may have been the the way to go on this one. So we've got lines there for, <clears throat> or we've got trenches there for water lines and ready to roll on that. So kind of made a bigger mess than what I would have thought, but it, it definitely got it done. So that's the whole project there. Um, $35,000 for basically everything that you saw, you know, water, electric, the electrician, I think was about $3,500. Concrete was probably around, you know, what we talked about earlier, pergola, um, crushed concrete driveway, fence, land clearing, stuff like that. Thanks for watching the video. Subscribe, like, thumbs up, thumbs down. Um, let me know what you think. Any questions, drop them in the comments. Appreciate you watching the video. Appreciate you spending your time with me. Thanks again. See you on the next one.